Greetings, Reclaimers. I am 343 Guilty Spark, monitor of Podcast Evolved. Protocol dictates that you must listen. Come. We have a wealth of knowledge to share with you, and you don't want to make my blue eye red. Do you, Reclaimers? Spartans to Podcast Evolve, your home for Halo. Oh, that's the first time I've said that. Oh, that's weird. That's <laughs> pretty, a new intro. Pretty great, right? We tried our, yeah, we tried pretty great. New tagline. Look at that. Brand new. Uh, I'm your host today, David, and we have a special guest with us today, Installation Zero Zero. Hello. Hello, there he is. Also joining me is Krista. Can we call you Ark for short? Yeah, go on. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and Oren. Hey, everybody. I can see that going very badly. Arky. <laughs> Arky. Arky. There you go. Arky. Yeah. See, no one's ever come up with that before. They call me Mr. Zero Zero a lot, but. Yeah, you know, we're, we're very creative here at Podcast Evolved, you know? <laughs> Straight off the cuff. Good job, Krista. Today is our lore topic printed by our patrons. So thank you very much, guys, for supporting us. And this week, we are continuing in our Road to Infinite miniseries with the Office of Nasual Intelligence, or ONI for short. So our special guest has done a video on this, which is probably worth going checking out. Within the first five minutes, you you tell us that we should be confused, and we are, because Oni is crazy, and the various branches and sub-branches get very convoluted very fast, but they are awesome and very, very interesting. So I think most Halo players will be aware of the Oni and its influence, but maybe not the depth of which they are, like how they exist and how they do their work. Just before we get in, uh, I'm going to do some social bits, so be sure to check out our website if you haven't already. It's Halo Podcast Evolved, also halopodcast.com. It features all of our shows, uh, like Mission Debrief, which is a deep dive into Halo Games campaign mission, done our various missions done, mission by mission. The Halo Book Club, which is exactly what you think it is, where we go in to look at different media like the comic books, short stories, and full novels. Uh, Our newest show is Build With Blocks, so that's our specific show around mega blocks on the halo franchise within it so colin takes a look at that with two of our new new uh, recruits also and finally i will say take a look at our patreon page which is patreon.com slash halo podcast evolved so thank you everyone who supports us up to now we're steadily growing and it's pretty i still don't understand how, how yeah, we managed to we've actually <laughs> we actually just hit a new goal too I think we are, we have a 29 subscriber goal, and uh, we just hit that this past week. And uh, so we have some some kind of new content coming for the patrons, as well as some some new upgrades for our recording, our personal recording setups to kind of make the show quality uh, much better for everybody. Oh, I get new shit. Yeah, you do. Yeah, it's it's specific <laughs> uh, Krista filters to, to help us edit after the fact, Krista. Oh, are you filtering me out of the show, or are you filtering more of me into the show? Oh, definitely out. <laughs> definitely. There's already a lot of Krista in our shows, even the ones you're not on. We do encourage our listeners to go support Audible because we have a lovely link in there where you can listen to almost all the Halo novels I think are on there now at this stage. I think, yeah, all all the novels. All of them. So Oren is a big listener. If you do get a chance, please do the, order the, uh, the URL, audibletrial.com, podcast evolved, so we get a little bit of a bump uh, if you do use that. So please give it a go. Thank you very much. So I thought I might just start off with uh, Arky. Would you mind, do you want to just introduce yourself a little bit? Because I imagine a lot of our listeners would probably actually, they would know who you are, they would recognize you. But if you want, just to give a little small description of yourself and what you do. Yeah, sure. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some getting used to Arky. Um. <laughs> I hope it doesn't take off at all and it's only us. <laughs> just, a, just a unique name you've given me. Yeah, that's cool. Yes, I'm Halo Law YouTuber. I'm probably best known for my uh, my most detailed breakdown series, where I 
take one particular object, say, from the uh, Halo universe and break it down to insane levels of detail. Aside from that, I also do like Lore and Theories videos. I also do quite a lot of collaborative stuff with my classified materials uh, playlist and a few other bits and pieces like the armory that I'm up to. But yeah, I'm most well known for the most detailed. And you do pretty well, I think, overall. You've got some pretty solid numbers over there in the YouTubes. Yeah, not too bad. I think we're um, we're on our way to 60,000 subscribers. We crossed 50,000 uh, about six weeks ago. So, yeah, the subscribers are um, rolling in. And is it just you? Are you a one-man show? It is indeed just a one-man show, yeah. Well done, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's kick it off with some Halo lore, guys. So, the road to infinite. I will give us a brief sum down of what our last episode was on this topic so we had installation 07 who is not on this episode so don't get confused (laughs) it's one of my children ancient humanity occupied the range during the time of the forerunners and then the downfall of the humanity were kind of two of the topics we discussed as part of this because installation 07 has a crazy history and finally we said kind of everything we know about the present state of the ring so please go check out that episode Today, like we said, we're talking about the Office of Naval Intelligent Oni, and there is lots of information to go through. Oren, I'm going to kick it over to you, buddy. Where do you reckon you want to start? Oni is, is huge. They, they are like a subdivision within the UNSC Naval Command, but because of their kind of will to just kind of do whatever they want, even without the Naval Command's really oversight, they really are kind of their own division of like the military almost. Essentially... The Office of Naval Intelligence is the Information Gathering and Analysis Division. And the, the way they kind of do all of their different sneaky things is it's all divided into different sections. So we're going to kind of dive into what each section is kind of responsible for and how they may like keep tags on tabs on other sections and how those sections have cropped up in different games and different books and that kind of stuff. But if, if you only know the very basics of Oni, you probably know that it's just, it's kind of like, su- uh, like has deception and manipulation, and they have uh, espionage type of characteristics about them, and they kind of do things for quote-unquote the greater good, um, is kind of their more or less justification for doing some of these atrocities, because the Spartan program is an example of something that came out of Oni. They also exert kind of virtual, complete control and the flow of information that is given to the territories within the United Earth government. And so they that's another whole division where they kind of monitor what's being said. So there's kind of tamper fear or hope and kind of things in that nature. So they're, they're a huge entity within the Halo fiction, kind of pop up in, in different parts and parts of it. Before we start diving into the section specifically, though, we want to talk about two characters real quick that they are the... They define only. The, they're kind of important. They're the... So ad, like, what, what are their actual titles? Sinkani. Sink, well, they're they're com- commanding... What, Commander-in-Chief Commander of the Office. Commander-in-Chief of it. the Office of Naval Intelligence. They're in charge of this whole kit and caboodle. And so Crystal kind of give us an overview of, of these two characters, and then we'll... We'll kind of start riffing off each other for the different sections. Uh, so we're going to start with Margaret Parangoski. Uh, she's a very nice lady. Um, <laughs> she likes to give you cookies and milk. And <laughs> I was surprised at how little information we actually have on Parangoski. Mm. I was on the uh, Wikipedias, and the Wikipedias were v- shorter than I expected. She was born either 2461 or 2462. I don't even know when. Nice. <laughs> we're really going. We're, we're doing the detailed. We're very detailed here. That's what we're known for, being just excruciatingly detailed. She joined the UNSC at 22 and quickly rose to the cap, uh, captain in the Navy in January 2nd, 2051, which she was now a rear admiral. Uh, she reclassifies all material concerning Onyx as top secret. Secret. It was accompanied by a system-wide network purge of all information pertaining to the top secret Oni project, what, which was later known as the Spartan Project. It's kind of interesting that Parangoski had so much to do with Onyx. Uh, March t- 6th, 2525, after 15 years of research, Parangoski shut down the research facilities at Onyx because the UNSC needed resources to fight against the insurrectionists. 
That's kind of how, I guess, how Onyx just became a unknown planet that no one knew about, that didn't exist. I was under the assumption that it was actually um, the Assembly that removed records of Onyx from the databases. Uh, hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Where did we pull that from? Uh, I, be- I-, I remember reading, um, so that you, didn't, you know the data pads in Halo Reach. If you actually read that, it's a, it's a conversation oh, between no, different it, aspects it. of the Assembly. It was detailed in those that um, the assembly, um, the majority decided to remove all evidence of Onyx from um, from the data um, from the databases to because they didn't think humanity were ready for the discoveries that were that, that were there. Again, I, I suppose it could be that they initially removed it and then Parangoski or, or the UNSC found it anyway, and then Parangoski removed it again, so to speak, at a later date. Because there were only facilities on Onyx. Yeah. It gets Halo Halo Reach makes everything so much more complicated in the Halo universe. Yeah, it, it just convolutes everything. Could they have um, tried to hide Onyx before it was then discovered by by UNSC, and then we started the whole Spartan Three program and all that? It's entirely possible. I, I, if if I recall correctly, even the even the dates that are involved actually on the data pads suggest that it, that the assembly were talking about this way before the events of Halo actually even took place. I, I'm trying to remember. We did briefly talk about the assembly in, in our AI episode, and yeah, it seemed that their kind of general presence and, and kind of monitoring and monitoring information happened a good hundred years before "quote unquote" modern Halo. But in terms of where their kind of presence and in, present influence is, you know, I, I could see them still kind of assisting with uh, with that. It's definitely interesting because they would have had to. They, of course, probably recognized before anyone else could the significance of these ancient objects that really weren't classified at the time as Forerunner. Well, even on top of that, it's it's just a, just the suggestion that the individuals that made up the assembly, evidently, we, we, we're, we're, it's relatively conclusive they're AIs, but they seem to have existed over quite a long time period, much longer than the right. seven-year time limit of, yeah. of, 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 um, of AIs. So either the individuals were you know, sort of frequently swapped out every time one of them became rampant or these particular AIs defied the seven year lifespan by a huge margin. Which is an interesting uh, tie in to what's going on in Halo 5 as well and if we'll see something regarding the assembly in the kind of conclusion of this created versus uh, creators kind of Indeed. war going on. So Parangoski's still a thing. Uh, she was involved in pretty much all the Spartan programs in some fashion. She def- she definitely was more involved in Spartan 2s and forward. Not the Spartan 1 program as much. Um, she was promoted in- to Commander-in-Chief of the Office of Naval Intelligence, which is too much to say, so we're going to call her the Sinconi. By 2552, there's not an actual specific date on when she was promoted to Sinconi. Um, she has a strange relationship with Halsey, which is actually pretty great. They're like, uh, very angry ladies t- towards each other. Definite clash of wills. Yeah, they, they both are very similar in a, in a way, where they're very strong-willed people, and it just does not mix well between the two. And that's more explored in the Kilo 5 trilogy, if you want to learn more about that. She retired in 2555, but is still loosely involved with Oni in some fashions, especially during this crazy created thing. So we will hopefully see more from this very nice lady who sits around and (laughs) eats ginger snaps. We will get her in the Halo TV show. She's one of the characters that will have a kind of live action presence. Oh, Oren, that's not a thing. Yeah, yes, it is. TV show, it's been a thing for, like, what, six years? But if Parangoski's in it, then there has to be a strong Oni presence. Because you have to have Oni to explain her purpose in that show at all. Absolutely. Um, but I suppose if, within reason, you know, the Spartans were technically a classified Oni project, so anything involving the Spartans, especially in the early days of the Spartan program, you're going to ha- Oni are, are just involved by proxy. There's always that... that- Agent in the shadows, <laughs> watching from a distance. Yes. The spooks, that's it. The spooks. Ooh. Oh, I'm scared now. So the next lady we're going to talk about is Saren Osman. So she was born in 2511. We know exactly when she was born. On Cascade, uh, she was abducted in 2517 as a Spartan 2 candidate. She was given the designation Saren 019. 
She failed the augmentation process and only received the genetic and biochemical enhancements. After that, her body was rejecting everything and she could no longer be a Spartan at that point. At 14, Oni took custody of her, repaired the damage the augmentations did, and put her into the Oni Commander's Program. In the Oni Commander's Program, Perengoski took a liking to Saren and took her in as her protege. There's definitely elements of guilt, though. Like, she was super guilty about what she did. As, as for, like, the Spartan program as a whole? You yeah. get that in the Kilo 5 books, that she, like, really regrets her decisions, and hence all the halty hate in those books. There's definitely, like, an element of she took Saren in to kind of look after her. Well, and almost for Saren to kind of take back the life that was taken for her, because now she can make whatever decisions she wants as Sin Connie. Saren got her surname Osman, uh, because when she was kind of adopted by Perengoski, she needed to hide her identity as a former Spartan, so she took the surname Osman, Saren Osman. Uh, in 2553, the Kilo, tr- Kilo 5 trilogy happened, uh, some elite espionage, you know, the pious inquisitor, Venezia shit, a lot of stuff happened. Read those books, it's really good, it really develops her character a little further. It was pretty much one of her first, like, big girl missions. <laughs> that Perengoski kind of put her on. It was uh, like when Perengoski's like, hands off, take care of this, we'll see how you do. She did pretty well because in 25, uh, 2555, she obtained the rank of Sinconi and uh, replaced Perengoski as head of Oni. Post Halo 5 in 2558, BB got Saren and Hood off Earth to Rosh- Roshbox. Rossbox. Rossbox World. Before the created rebelled, Saren was able to escape with some Oni military AIs before they were able to defect, and that's the last kind of place we've heard from her, so she's off doing something. <laughs> she's off chilling with Hood. Yeah, they're having a good old time. <laughs> Hood seems like a good person to be, like, kind of quarantined with, just hanging out. He seems like a cool dude. Imagine he'd have some pretty good war stories. Not sure about Saren, though. She's very serious. She's more of a doer. I couldn't really see her sitting still for too long. It would be interesting to kind of get a story of just Hood really annoying Saren the entire time with stories to try to just keep being her the grouchy mind old man. Everything. This reminds me of a story. <laughs> oh, shut up, Hood. There's really just too many characters to, to go through because all the different... There, there's so many generals and agents and... You could even classify the Spartans to a degree, and, and, and Saren's not the only washout. You had other washouts that joined Oni to do different things, and so there, there really is a lot of information there that we didn't want to just kind of dive too deeply into, because they kind of deserve their own highlight down the road. But another kind of general character we should mention is BB, who is short for Black Box, and that's the personal assistant AI. He's, he's a fourth generation smart AI for Perengoski and then now Osman. And he's like a genius. <laughs> but like I say that more so than than your typical AI, just like his like personality and just the way he understands the importance of the information like he processes is just really interesting kind of how he's developed throughout the Kilo 5 trilogy and, and elsewhere. And then just to give you another idea from just other teams throughout the books and, and media, you know, Black Team, The Ferrets, Grey Team, Kilo 5, Fire Team Osiris, these are all teams and, and, and groups that are kind of given directives from Oni, so they really have their hand in, in anything and everything related to kind of the military and, and reconnaissance of, of the, the naval side of everything, because there's, there's also the the ground side of the military, so. I don't think Black Team's getting many orders anymore. Not anymore. (laughs) (laughs) No. R.I.P. All right, so within Oni, we have four sections. Uh, We have section zero, one, two, and three. Section zero... That seems simple? Yeah, seems simple enough, right? But they're still a little complicated. So section zero is Oni's internal affairs, just like police department's internal affairs. They kind of oversee the other departments but it's really interesting because they they they're supposed to look into the other sections but it's they say that it's harder for them to keep tabs on section one and section three because of how secret those sections are (laughs) 
So it's kind of like an interesting dichotomy between them trying to do their job, but also the other sections that kind of remain secret to do whatever secret stuff they're working on. Like illegal programs? Yeah, <laughs> like illegal programs and journals kept by other people. But they, they essentially kind of root out and eliminate illegal programs and, and stuff like that. And it's interesting because some of the other sections aren't aware of other sections, but all the other sections are aware of Oni. So the, the main kind of examples that we get throughout the, the books is like Dr. Halsey's journal is now in in like an archive with Section Zero. The Spartan One program, you know, kind of the Orion progress. No, it's not. I've got it right here. Oh, you got it no, right it's there? Not. I've got it right here. <laughs> You're the Ark. You have everything. But do you know what's on the removed pages? Do we do we get have we have we gotten any like addendums to her journal over the year? Yes. Yeah, we got some extra pages and stuff. And another kind of cool tidbit here is that one of the Phoenix logs in Halo Wars Two mentioned that uh, Section Zero was monitoring some communiques between Oni agents uh, that were tracking the banished between twenty five fifty and twenty five fifty eight. And so this kind of gives you an idea of their their input and kind of how they they dive into the different areas of Oni. They're the pencil pushers. Then we have section one, and this is the intelligence branch. They're the ones that go in, get the information, evaluate it, and decrypt it, and go to... And, they, and then, they, then they give it to section two, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, that's where all the spies are. That's where the cover-ups of like different locations that Oni wants to keep secret, like where Onyx and Trevelyan are. They also had a lot of like evacuation notices for different colonies when the Covenant's forces were being deployed. So they, they were kind of able to pinpoint and try to contain that information so it didn't spread too quickly. Um, but they, they did a lot of the information gathering and code breaking, kind of just general military espionage. Section 2, a little bit more interesting. They're the propaganda and kind of psychological operation division. I think, would you say that Hunt the Truth would fall under Section 2? I'd, I'd say so. And so it's a lot of kind of just monitoring the information and how it gets out to the public, making sure that there isn't too much fear going around with the Covenant attacks, making sure we have messages of hope with the Spartan program going around to kind of boost morale, things like that. Section 2 actually is where the Oni Directive, it's Oni Directive 930 came, where Spartans couldn't be listed as KIA and were instead listed as MIA to make it, you know, give the whole messaging that Spartans never die. So Section 2 hired Benjamin Gerard to interview several people on the campaign surrounding Master Chief for the kind of hunt the truth that we got. And then in ODST, the mission where you go to the Alpha site, that site is a Section 2 like headquarters and a Section 2 facility on New Mombasa. And then we blow it up because... That's what we do in Halo. Because it's fun. We can't have it, so you can't have it. Well, of all the people to blow it up as well, it was Mickey. I mean, he ends, he ends up being an insurrectionist himself, doesn't he? He got a taste, he got a bit of a taste for it. A thirst that couldn't be quenched. <laughs> Alright, so our final section is section three here. This is the kind of popular one, I think. It, it definitely has more of an impact in most of the stories that we get in the Halo universe, because it's the top secret projects division. This is where they're innovating new human technologies, they're reverse engineering and implementing alien technologies and, and, you know, all like the Halo 5 weapons that we get in Warzone, like all of that stuff is just played around and thrown at the wall in Section 3. And then within Section 3, there's also kind of subsections where they come carb, carb, oh my gosh. Compartmentalized? Yeah, that's the word. (laughs) Compartmentalized. All the different programs and research and it's partly to kind of just keep them all secret from each other because that's all about that's all section 3 is all these spooks are all about secrecy so for instance you have you have beta 3 where they capture covenant technologies beta 5 which is all of the spartan 3 program delta 6 it's uh, stealth operations within the spartan 4s so this is like the fire team osiris materials group where they grab materials and advanced materials and they eventually started developing the, the mjolnir armor And then you have something called Tip of the Shadow, which is their recovery analysis and decoding of all data that is then given to Section 3 from from maybe Section 1. Once they kind of find information, they throw it over to Section 3 and they kind of uh, decrypt it and stuff like that. 
I'm trying to think if there's any other kind of specific examples, but they're, they're just, it's kind of hard to, to narrow it down because they're so present throughout the lore. Well, things like Agent Locke was an only Section 3 operative, so like that's kind of the things they did. They did like hunter-killer missions and had people sent out like that, so that's probably one of the main things that many Halo people would have at least played. In the grand scheme of things, they are basically the Halo equivalent of the Illuminati, really. Yeah. Even their symbol looks like the Illuminati yeah. symbol. They, they just control all human interest across across all known space. But they're so subvertive and, and up to some very dark things. <laughs> and then you even have undercover people as well. We've had some stories where, where some people were fighting for the insurrection and they disguised themselves as Oni spooks. And so you have crazy secrets within secrets and... I forgot what quote am I thinking of. Even his secrets have secrets if it's from something. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's from um that's from Marvel. That's Iron Man talking about Nick Fury. Oh yeah, that is <laughs> <laughs> Good reaching in the databanks. <laughs> so then uh kinda of, we talked about this earlier, but just generally some of the technology within Oni we have they kind of engineer their own vehicles as well. They have their own like fleets and stuff like that. There's just so much that, that Oni has at their fingertips and disposal to to kind of do these covert operations with between you know different types of warthogs and they have these prowlers which are the super stealth crafts that are have slip space capabilities and uh so they they have a, they have a very big budget and they i guess use it efficiently enough to have such an influence and able to maneuver all these secret avenues and stuff like that. That's why I'm convinced they're going to be the next like major enemy of the galaxy. Once the creator had sort of dealt with and out of the way, it's it's got to be a battle against Oni, surely. I've heard of that theory before, and I think we can kind of unpack that a little bit and talk a little bit of what we think Oni's influence might be in Infinite. But I, I think I was reading somewhere that someone was saying that like one theory was we might be able to find some way to kind of squelch or contain the created in some way with the help of Oni but then they kind of become the entity that rises and has now they have the too much power and then now is they filled the power vacuum yeah so then now we now because they have too much power we have to go thwart their power I wonder so does that mean Osman might be building up to be that this grand villain she's Possibly. always been kind of written in a positive light but there are other characters within Oni that are like not very nice people. Like, isn't them um, Atkinson like a fucking terrible human being? Yeah. There could totally be, now that, let's say, Saren is off stranded on a planet. I mean, it could totally be that someone else steps up and just kind of like takes the, the reins from under her. Like, you can kind of have like a covenant situation to where you have some, you know, stubborn elite that feels like he's better than all the other elites and so he rallies a, a mutiny. And goes and runs off and has his own like splinter faction. I mean, you could have. I can't remember where it was, but wasn't there was like a prowler captain who went rogue, didn't he? Like he took loads of like Oni secrets with him and took loads of prowler. I think didn't he take a bunch of stuff? I can't totally blank it on who this is, but it was in the books of where like we could totally have like people like a section of Oni like go totally awol. See, I thought with um with the Hunt the Truth um series. It was the, the 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 suggestion I was taking from it, at least, was that Chief was like he ha- he had so much influence, he had so much power, effectively, not just not just in the physical sense, but over over the masses, over over public opinion, because he is you know the Spartan, the savior of humanity. I was taking from it that they were getting to a point where only were doing what they could to kind of like mar the Chief and and reject him. Sorry, remember the intro of Halo 4 started with that? And yeah. you always you got that element exactly. of, like, they totally just want to cut him down. Yeah, and I just thought that from that, that would I thought if, if only you're going to become the main enemy, the the way that would that seemed to be, like, the, the storyline that was going to be going with is that Chief has gotten to a point where he's so powerful and he's actually a threat to Oni. So they try to take him out, but of course it's Chief. You can't take Chief out. Nobody can take Chief out. Chief goes out on his own terms. But when... They attempt to take him out, he survives somehow, and then realises that Oni's the problem, and then he basically comes for Oni, but then people rally behind him, and that's how like you'd have the massive, you know, sort of civil war. And because Oni have made an enemy of themselves, not just to humanity, not just to John, but also to the elites for, you know, like poisoning them and creating genetically modified crops and stuff like that to, to, to kill them off. 
perpetuating their own civil war. And also, like, speaking of the elites, if there was ever to be a divide, the elites are probably more loyal to Master Chief himself than to Oni and the UNSC. Well, yeah, ultimately they'd follow the Arbiter, and the Arbiter and Chief are, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've read the books, yeah, they, they, they are. They're, they're, they've, when, the, after the events of Halo 5, the very, like, ending cutscene where Chief arrives and meets Cortana, uh, Cortana, Halsey for the first time uh, in ages. same difference. <laughs> yeah, same difference, same person. After that, they, the, the Chief and Arbiter actually go and have a sit down and share stories and, and sort of memories of, of the war past and actually sit down and have a meal together. I mean, come on, they're, they're, they're literally like besties now. <laughs> you don't do that with just anybody. No. <laughs> well, especially the Master Chief who doesn't know how to talk to people. <laughs> I mean, the Chief the chief would not take off his helmet. He wouldn't, put, he wouldn't let his guard down at all in front of anyone unless he knew that 100% that he was, he was safe and it was safe to do so. So the very fact that, he, ha- that he, ha- he sat down and had a meal with the Arbiter suggests he took his helmet off. He wouldn't do that with just anyone. Yeah. It would definitely be a really interesting storyline because we have, haven't really gotten like human-on-human violence throughout the entire video game series. And we know it's prevalent in the Halo universe at large, but we just haven't ever gotten to experience that firsthand in, in the, you know, the main uh, medium that Halo is created on is video games. Yeah, I mean, even 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 the advertisement campaign for Halo Five that suggested the chief was going rogue, I was all up for that. I was like, okay, cool. I'm I'm the chief, and and I'm gonna have to fight off other humans as they're trying to come and get me. I'm I am on board with that. I will fight as chief and fight who I need to. Let's do it. But then it didn't happen. So. Well, and something else interesting is all the Spartans are loyal to Chief as well. If Oni wants to start some shit, they have to kill all the Spartan twos. Yeah. Well, there's not that many of them. You say that there's actually there's significantly more of them than uh, than people think. Although there's like the few main ones that we know of that enter the law quite frequently. Um, it's actually confirmed, like so for, for example, with the augmentations, pr- approximately half of them apparently washed out were KIA when they were given the augmentations, which is actually factually incorrect. Only one of them was confirmed to actually have died. The rest of them were put into suspended animation, and most of it's theorized that most have been actually rehabilitated and put back into active service. Now, that's interesting. Yeah, because re- we, we read uh, Fall of Reach pretty recently, and I do remember them kind of like getting sent away, but... There was a funeral, wasn't there? There was definitely... Yeah, there was a funeral, but the caskets were empty. The caskets were empty. Only one, only one was confirmed to have died, and that's Spartan 073. That's the only one that's confirmed to have actually died. It's actually brilliant of Bungie to do at the time, because now they have, like, 343 has, like, this card up their sleeve that's like, oh, wait, all the Spartans are Spartans, haha. And I think they've already done that to an effect, because I think some people well, have tried team. to connect all the dots. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, Red Team's one example to where they were all technically washout, or... Washouts are they yeah. presumed dead but came back? No, they were they were washouts. They were washouts. They were rehabilitated. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. I mean, that's a, that's another example of Oni's, Oni's, you know, sort of control and conspiracies. I mean, ultimately, they invested a ridiculous amount of money in the training and development of the Spartans to have half of the class wash out. They weren't just going to let that happen. They're assets, and they weren't just going to shoot them out into space either. That's, that's exactly money. yeah. Could it also have been a ploy by you know some of the higher ups and Oni, specifically Parangoski, to kind of keep some of the Spartans away from Halsey once they were done? Possible, yeah, and and sort of have their own sort of personal Spartan skunk work, so to speak, yeah. But then I suppose that's that's kind of come about now with with the Spartan fours and and individuals and like the Locke. threes. Yeah, they've got their own their own dedicated dedicated teams of Spartans now that operate exclusively within Oni and don't really answer to the UNSC. Interesting. <laughs> so we have kind of a I don't know how you describe that, but the, the angle we kind of just described, if we were to take it in a little bit more of a of an ally side of things, what do we think is going on with the Zeta Halo project because that, that's the only confirmed thing that we know right now that's Oni related that's on the ring. Are you forgetting about Brohammer, the most important character in all of Halo? I was about to get to that, and so obviously, I think I think the last thing we know about any sort of presence on the ring was in 2558. The Brohammer cutscene is sometime in 60, 61. I'm not sure if the, 61. Is it 61. You know, time has passed and the ring, you know, part of the ring's destroyed and 
we're thrown into this mess. Do we think that Oni's involved? Do we think... What, what kind of theories do we want to try to speculate on that where we can kind of come in with this? Because Chief's obviously going to jump out of the ship, but, like, is he going to be the only one there? Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely know there's some kind of Oni presence on uh, Installation 07 because of some of the book. Yeah. L- looking at the, just the trait, I know, I know it's very little and we've gone over them so many times, but the, the trailers that we've been given for Halo Infinite, the original um, Slip Space Engine demo, where it's just Chief on, on the ring, you know, and he sees the, the Marines in the distance, and we get the reveal of that glorious helmet. So good. It gives me chills just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I th- I th- I think just judging by the uh, I mean also judging by the date on the on the dash of the, the, of pelican. the pelican that that actually happened before the cutscene with Brohammer, right? And and if you actually look at some of the um, the official artwork that's been released for Halo Infinite, you'll actually notice that the chief has stood in what looks to be sort of the rear doorway of a pelican, um, and you can see sections of the ring in the background floating away. Actually, like being like, like ejected, like they are in Halo t- um, in Halo Wars Two, right? Very similar to that. So I think some something's. I'm not exactly sure what, but something's happened in in sort of chronological order of of Chief coming across those Marines on the um, ring, those sections of the ring being ejected, and then Chief being found just floating through space by Brohammer in you know 2561. What what happened between those those points is. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the real question. But yeah, we do get some of that ring fragmentation in, in that Discover Hope trailer. When Bramer wipes wipes the frost off the screen, we see Chief. There is some debris back there as well, floating around. But we've seen that happen in other content as well, where you just eject a segment of the ring for one reason or another. Either it's damaged or you're killing a didact or something, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Or you're just bored, you know, through it, Guilty Spark, you're just bored got nothing better to do experiment right all right i'm trying to there's not really a whole lot more we could really talk about kind of like the angle where we see a little bit more i guess slander going against the master chief uh if if oni were to kind of go that route that'd be very interesting to kind of see more of that kind of see the real hunt the truth that we didn't really get (laughs) in halo 5 i'm I'm interested in what chief and blue team are doing on reach to pick up from halsey's old lab yeah yes is is that going to be the shard of Cortana that's suggested to be? It's got to be something him? Cortana related. You you'd imagine that that's what they're doing. They're finding out some way to fight the created. I mean, we kn- we know that Halsey made a you know a few cl- a few clones of of herself to to create AIs, and I, I'm aware of I think at least three successful like brains that she could use for AI. One I think she used in an experiment in actually the the the, the couple of removed pages from Halsey's journal detail her using her brain to create another AI and implant it within a slip space probe and then send the probe into slip space and uh, and she thought that having an AI not be limited by the normal four dimensions of space to be able to grow its crystalline matrix and you know the connections of its of its neural pathways it wouldn't be limited by space anymore it'd be almost infinitely possible to have as an infinite number of connections that kind of sounds like the you know Halsey's freaking crazy <laughs> what's really creepy about it is that the AI actually did start sending back information once it was in slip space and then it became nonsensical then it started talking maddeningly about um, about the destruction of humanity and then began conversing about the nature of the universe and its origin and um and just become so disillusioned and scary that Halsey severed connection and just hoped that it would it would die just hoped that it was lost forever oh that's coming back we to don't Hantos. know that <laughs> and we know that cortana was in slip space at the end of halo 4 and of course with with slip space slip space is kind of it's not normal space the time doesn't flow the same you know space doesn't work the same so yeah, it's in theory. There's there's a lot of potential for that, but that that crazy version, so to speak, of Cortana that that was planted in slip space to have some influence on the grand scheme of things. It'll be interesting. I'm excited for them to go back to Reach for many reasons, but it's going to definitely set the stage for what we're going to see in Infinite because it has to. Absolutely. There needs to be a lead up. Yeah, I don't want it to be like a prequel to the to the game. That's pretty much what it is, though. Well, I don't think it'll be that 
tied in. Cause I right, think right. That's all I'm saying. Kind of learn their lesson that you can't give players six books of required reading before they play the game. No, but in this but instance, it, it sh- you have a book that actually takes place after Halo 5 and before Halo 6 that has Chief and Blue Team in it. That seems pretty central, even if it's an offshoot story, but like, it does seem pretty like you're going to want to read this going into Halo Infinite. Even just for 100% universe building and character relations, it's probably going to be very important. And that's our boy Troy, you know. Oh, our boy Troy. Troy Denning. Right. I think that's about it. Is there any f- other final notes we want to talk about oni uh they're 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 interesting and quite in depth if you want to learn some more about oni i mean my, i've done some videos on oni um i actually did a collaboration with my man uh hidden xperia he's um he's got some really good content on oni as well oh, that so. guy <laughs> yeah 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 that guy and uh <laughs> and if you um I, i'm pretty sure if you pop over to halo canon as well he's got some um some interesting stuff on on oni as well yeah, there's a there's a wealth of information out there. Is uh, and it should be um, yeah, be able to be able to be packaged up in a nice uh, tidy video format for you to consume. Delicious. And and your your channel's just Halo, and or is it just it's just just Installation Zero Zero, no Halo. Uh, yeah, just Installation Zero Zero. Yeah. He wants people who already know what it is to go to his channel. <laughs> he doesn't have to put Halo in front of it, you know. You're already in by the time you get. Yeah, there you zero, go. Zero. I, I was I was gonna go with the Halo guy, but you know that I just thought that would be kind of insulting. The Halo guy, not not as catchy. The Master Chief man. I think we're pretty much here at the end, so I'd like to say, our well, our next topic on the Robot Infinite is the Huragok. So that should be pretty interesting because we should presumably see see these guys again coming up in, in Infinite. You would want to. I hope so. They're convenient for, like, the catch-all of we need to do something ridiculous. These guys can just do it. They pop up all over the place. I, w- I want to know more about the life worker Huragok, to be honest. The ones that can actually repair biology. Yeah, that was our boy Troy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mr. Denning. <laughs> I like that they sounded that they were, like, they seem really unique. Okay, so I said thank you all for joining us. Erky, thank you very much, dude, for coming along and collaborating no with us. Would you like to promote anything in particular other than your, your channel, your Patreon? No, just like I say, if, if people are interested in the content, pop across to the YouTube channel, have a little watch. If you like, hit the subscribe button. Uh, that's, you know, all I ask, really. <laughs> super simple, super easy. If you're listening to the show, I would recommend doing it. Because like you said, uh, when I think of like YouTube Halos, I think of yourself, Hidden Xperia, and Halo Cannon. Those are like the three main channels that I would be aware of. Yeah, it's it's so it's so weird for me for for people to 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 say that because I, I, like I've I've only been doing this like a year, and I've been subscribers to like Hidden Xperia and and Halo Cannon and and all of these guys for such a long time to suddenly be classed among them is like <laughs> what? I went back to see what when was your first video, and I was very surprised to see that it was a year ago. Yeah, uh, my very first video was the um, the most detailed breakdown of the Mark VI. There's there's a starting place for you, and your most recent one was the Pelican, which I saw, which I watched. The Pelican, which is blowing up at the moment, actually. I've, I've noticed. I've noticed. And I was just, I was just now. about to say, you don't mention the fact that they blow up and crash all the time. <laughs> which I think is the key fact of the Pelican <laughs> that everybody knows. Well, you don't you don't want to make the audience feel stupid and tell them things they already know. Yeah, there everybody you go. Everybody knows Pelicans crash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe. But excellent. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us, dude. It's it's been awesome having you here. It's been a pleasure. I finished my whiskey. Oh, finish your whiskey? Nice. Podcasting and drinking. I, I'd be afraid to, I think. Cheers to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find every episode of our shows on our website, which is halopodcastevolve.com, as I mentioned at the top of the show. Uh, it also features links to everything else that we do, our Discord, our Facebook, our Patreon page, uh, Xbox Live Club, and all the rest. I might become a patron. Woo! <gasps> Thanks. Yay! Yay! We also have a voicemail, which is weird. Um, and which is amazing. On there. <laughs> Don't call it weird. No one will use it. <laughs> People do use it. We we'll get, get calls. We'll from... get the old ladies calling us asking about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> we got some cool, cool stuff on there. We, we, I don't think we included that in our live episode. We should. No, the random lady who called us. <laughs> it, it's it's weird. Let's um, dox so that's this old lady. <laughs> two o five evolved. That's two o five three eight six five eight three three. If you feel like using it, and with that, I will leave us there. I've been your host, David, and until next time, evolved. 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 <laughs>